Hello, hello! My name is Callista, and welcome back to When the Night Comes. In the last episode, we finished off Till Death. Camille and August got married, and it was so cute! It was really cute. I, I really don't know how Halloween is gonna top Till Death. Out of all of them so far, Till Death has been my favourite. I really enjoyed that. And now we are moving on to Halloween, the final mini story for this. This is going to be the last episode of When the Night Comes. Um, I'm, I'm kind of sad about it. I've really enjoyed When the Night Comes. It's been a lot of fun for me and I will be sad to, you know, wave goodbye to it. But, you know, we can't, we can't keep putting it off. Let's get started on Halloween. Yes, our first name. Camille. Abeline. And she uses she, her pronouns. And August, please. It's nights like this that I question my everything. I'm standing in the middle of a notoriously haunted patch of woodland, staring down a woman in white. She's floating a few inches above the muddy ground, and she's so bright it's almost blinding. Her snow-white hair and gown both strangely pristine. Her hair falls in her face like a ghostly veil, a face that shifts from haggard to beautiful to outright terrifying. She shifts over and over with every blink until I can't fathom which is her true form. It's annoying and horrible, and quite frankly, I have no fucking idea how I'm going to kill her. She lifts her arm and points a slender, crooked finger at me and sighs my name without moving her lips, the eerie noise echoing throughout the clearing. I try really hard not to shudder, despite the cold that creeps into my bones. I take a step away and tentatively sheath my weapon. I think this might have to be a negotiation rather than a massacre. Tell me what it is that you want. Hunter Abilene, you are so brave. But tell me, what do you fear? I don't think we have time to unpack all of that, with all due respect. I still don't like that laugh. That laugh sounds creepy as fuck to me. She chuckles, the sound as delicate as the chiming of bells. Humans all fear so much. Loneliness, pain, disappointment. Such delicate beings. She glides a little closer, the unfathomable depths of her sunken eyes clearer beneath her ever-shifting veil. I could take some of it away. No, thank you. She doesn't present it as a question, and the tips of my fingers and toes begin to tingle, my skin prickling with cold like the first lashings of frostbite. Something foreign tugs at the edges of my mind, like someone is trying to crack my skull open. So... Violence it will have to be. That's quite all right. I think I'll keep it. Slowly, I withdraw the small dagger at my hip, its blade enchanted with a dash of Ezra's magic. Though his attunement with nature may seem harmless, the gentle witch shouldn't be underestimated. He did tell me if I was ever in a sticky situation that one brush of the blade would repel most creatures, and so I hope he's correct, as I lash out and slash across her torso before she renders me utterly useless. She gasps and recoils, drawing back, her clawed fingertips brushing the frayed edges of her dress where it gapes open at her abdomen. Black smoke spills from the crevice, and the feeling slowly begins to return to my limbs. Magic! Terrible magic! It hurts! 
So does getting your fear extracted and being left a mindless husk, but you don't hear me complaining. And with that, she bursts into a cloud of blue, billowing smoke that smells like rotten flesh. I cough to clear my lungs, taking a step back until I hit the trunk of a tree. I slide down and take a seat upon the forest floor, trying to muster the strength to launch myself back into what will inevitably be the next of many, many fights tonight. Fucking Halloween! I was supposed to have the day off today, and yet... Halloween is a holiday created by the creatures as a way for them to pretend they have some moral decency by deciding to take a night off from ravaging and killing humanity. Nice of them. They finally take a breath, their eyes flashing purple. Right, so are you coming to the party? Maybe. Aw, oh, come on, August. It'll be fun. I snort, watching as August finally takes a seat at their desk and stops pacing their office, fretting over the... Fretting over the that? I think that must be fretting over the fact that they... That, that seems better. Fretting over the fact that they think there'll be some kind of creature uprising. It hasn't happened before, has it? So why worry? They glare at me beautifully. Three years ago, a demon from out of town ate someone's sister in the alleyway behind the wolf. Oh. Oh no. Oh. Oh dear. Camille and I thinking very similar things. Which is why we can't be complacent. So, yes, I shall attend the party under the guise of being there to have fun, but I will simply be keeping a very close eye. Are you going to dress up? I stand up and sit on the desk and offer them a sly smile. I know full well that August will never say boo to looking pretty, or prettier, seeing as they're pretty much perfect consistently. Yes, even in the mornings, and even when they're sick. Are you trying to coax me into getting excited about this event? Always. Maybe. Is it working? Maybe. I want to know what really convinced them is. I, I, I can't say no to this. It's too tempting. I tip my head to the side, silently surveying them. You know, I'm sure we could whip up something so we can go as the wizard staff characters. I am a hunter after all, and well, I gesture to them. You're a very pretty magical being. It's their favourite book series, and I know they can't possibly resist the thought of pulling off such a perfect couple's costume. They sit back in their chair and toy with their braid, and it's then that I know that I've won. Go on. I stand and walk around the desk, making my way over to their chair. I lean in, spinning them to face me, and I'm close enough that our noses brush. I can count every single one of their long, dark lashes. Oh god! Oh my goodness! Okay. Okay. We could even recreate a few scenes after if you'd like. August hums, colour sitting high on their cheeks. If I remember correctly, the wizard staff is um, a smutty romance novel, so oh no! Camille! Camille, what are you getting me into? You make a compelling case, Hunter. After successfully pleading my case with August, I head across town to pick up a few things from Ezra's shop. I'm pleasantly surprised to see just how enthusiastic Lunaris is about Halloween, 
the townsfolk out in droves with their children, all of them eagerly sporting costumes and clutching colourful buckets of treats in their tiny hands. I'm somewhat comforted to discover that they do their trick-or-treating by day, because regardless of if the rules dictate that creatures cause no trouble on this hallowed eve, I'd rather they stayed indoors come nightfall. I approach Ezra's shop and find the porch littered with an abundance of pu- Let's try that again. I approach Ezra's shop and find the porch littered with an abundance of pumpkins, each one lovingly carved with a different silly face. There's also a huge, fluffy spider sitting pride of place on the front door. As I push my way inside, the bell jingles above my head to announce my presence. But when my eyes fall upon the scene before me, I gather that Ezra isn't going to notice that I've arrived. It's chaos. There are tiny costumed children rubbing their grubby hands over all of Ezra's pretty displays, their parents doing little to stop them. And I spot Alcar chasing one dressed as a snake away from the occult section. Oh god, keep keep the children away from the occult section. I stand and survey my options, knowing I can refill my potions another day, but I can't seem to look away. Didn't think I'd ever see Alcar dressed as a pirate telling off a parent for not watching their kid, but life does enjoy surprising us in funny ways. Please show me the pirate costume. Please. Yes! Ah, <laughs> nice! Fuck me. Imagine a guy like me telling you how to parent your kid. Think that guy needs to reassess his life choices if you ask me. You did a very good job, Alcar. His tail wags lazily behind him. I sure did. And as Esther's a witch, of course he is. That also, that's a really nice cloak. I like the detailing there. God, this is a nightmare. Welcome to hell, Camille. Sorry to see that you're having a hard time. Is it always like this on Halloween? Ezra sighs and shoves a pile of angelica root into Alcar's hands. The wolf nods once and trots off, apparently playing the role of dutiful assistant quite beautifully. I've never seen him follow directions without complaining before. It is, yes. Parents love to bring their kids here like it's some kind of attraction, as if they don't live in a magical world every single day. Plus, they hardly ever bloody buy anything, either. He takes a deep breath and lets it out slowly, his fingers twitching at his sides before he plasters one of those lovely smiles across his lips. Anyway, I have Alcar helping me, so all is well. He's very good at keeping the children away from the dark magics, and Finn will be along shortly when the sun sets to help us close. Now, forgive me, I forgot to ask if you needed anything. I shake my head, thinking better of making any unnecessary purchases to add to his load today. I can come back tomorrow when you aren't being taken over by tiny humans. The look of relief that crosses his face says it all. Thank you, it's very much appreciated. Oh, are you and Gus attending the party later? I think I've managed to convince them to come without their uniform on, yes. It took some bribery, though. I'm sure it did, but they'll have a great time if they just let their hair down. I hope so. Ezra and Alcar both wave me off from behind the counter as I head out, and, as I open the door, another swarm of costumed monsters ascends. My job isn't exactly a dream... But today, I'm thankful I'm not in retail. The night of Halloween is blissfully, almost terrifyingly quiet in Lunaris. It's a perfect evening. The sky clear and cloud-free, and the stars are stark and plenty against the canopy of pitch black. There's definitely no signs of demons who might want to eat anyone, as far as I can see. Though, as I make my way across town to the wolf, I immediately come to the terrible realisation that something might be following me. 
So I've probably cussed myself by having happy thoughts then. Typical. I walk a little faster in the hope that whatever it is will give up and remember it's Halloween. But then I feel something caress my hand in a particularly ghostly way. <laughs> no. No. I spin, hearing an ominous chuckle as a breeze brushes by. Is it Raven? That could be Raven. I spot a puff of black smoke twisting and curling around the corner, heading straight for the graveyard. Balls. I take a deep breath and make a run for it, heading straight into the darkness. Once again, Camille is every white girl in a horror film. Good job, Camille. Or more specifically, the graveyard. Who's there? Show yourself. That has to be Raven. That has to be. I'm, I'm gonna go for Raven's voice for now. Hunter Abilene, we meet yet again. I slowly reach for the dagger that I keep on my belt, Halloween or not. I really, really hope it's not that fear demon again. I feel a little ridiculous standing in a graveyard wearing a costume and trying to emit an air of authority over an unseen, otherworldly entity, but we can't always pick and choose our battles. I thought you were all supposed to have a night off on Halloween. Can't this wait until tomorrow? <laughs> that has to be Raven. It has to be. The thing laughs again, and something about the sound strikes me as familiar. Just a silly little rule made by lazy creatures who need an excuse to pretend they can be good for one evening. Oh. Is this, um, this could be Aurora. I close my eyes and concentrate, letting my senses take over. I feel no hostility from this creature. Nothing but a desire to cause mischief. Raven. It's Raven. That's when I know that I've been fooled once again and by the very same culprit. You'd think I'd be smart to it by now. To her. Raven. If Finn finds out, he might actually kill you this time. You know how seriously he takes Halloween. A cloud of bats bursts from the tree line and hurtles towards me. You're really no fun, no matter how many times I try, are you? Lieutenant Gorgeous is rubbing off on you. I stare her down and put my dagger back in its holster. I'm plenty of fun and so is August. You just love to cause trouble a little too much. She laughs and I struggle not to smile. I can't blame her for wanting to, to antagonise Finn. He certainly does ask for it sometimes. He does, doesn't he? Stop listening to my thoughts. She slides closer in that snakish way she has perfected. Her red eyes flashing in the dark as she rests her head upon my shoulder. I am sorry if I spooked you, Camille. Just trying to have a little fun is all. There ain't enough of it around here, wouldn't you say? I hate that I can't be angry with her. Yeah, yeah, I've got a party to get to, so please promise me you won't cause any more trouble and I won't tell your sire. Her eyes light up. I could kiss you. When I finally make it to the party at the wolf, August looks like they're about to hit their breaking point. I slip through the crowd quickly, finding them at the bar glaring into a glass of red wine. Sorry I'm late, got caught up with something. Oh! Uh, what was it, H? Look at them! Oh my days! They look so unimpressed, but like, oh, they look, they look fabulous! I like that. 
They quirk their brow at me. The one they use when they're mad. Something. Should I be concerned? They're already getting up from their seat. Their fingers crackling with magic. I take their hands in my own and squeeze gently, reassuring them. Everything is fine. Also, I take a step back, taking in the sight of them. It's hard to think of a time when August didn't look good, and now is absolutely no exception. Considering they apparently despise Halloween, they definitely pulled through and then some with this costume. You look amazing. The perfect protagonist. Thank you. Unsurprisingly, you make an excellent hunter. I shrug and grin, giving them a little twirl. I fit the role quite well, I think. That you do. <laughs> Finn! <laughs> Finn, you came as yourself! Admittedly, Ezra did also go as a witch, so like, that's... That's fair, but like, guys, guys, you need to step it up. Suddenly, out of what appears to be nowhere, Finn emerges from the crowd wearing an incredibly stereotypical vampire costume. I suppose if anyone can, it's him. Finnegan, to what do we owe the pleasure? August smiles politely, squinting at the blood that trails Finn's chin. The vampire grins and flashes his pointy teeth. I just wanted to compliment your costumes. They are exactly what I had in mind. The second he says it, Ezra appears with a startled look on his face. With little to no subtlety, he elbows Finn in the ribs. Gus, Camille, how lovely to see you both. August narrows their eyes at the couple, and I very much feel like I've missed something. Likewise, your costumes are very... predictable. That shade, August. That shade. Well, we like to keep it traditional. Yes, wouldn't want to shock anyone by being original now, would we? Best to lay it all out on the table. Ezra rubs at his neck beneath his collar, and August watches the movement very closely. Just stay out of trouble, Casimir. I know how you cherish Halloween. See to it that none of your friends cause any unfortunate events, understand? They wouldn't dream of it, Lieutenant. I have my eyes on them, and they have their warnings. Uh, Raven clearly didn't listen to jack shit. Excellent. Then enjoy the rest of your evening, and don't drink too much. Ezra's cheeks flush a delightful shade of red, and Finn's wicked smile is enough to tell me that he isn't going to heed August's instruction. Goodbye! I blink and they're gone. He enjoys it, you know. They glare at me. Enjoys what? I gesture at my neck. The, uh, biting? I mean, why would you date a vampire if you didn't? I hear it's very nice. I don't want to know what he does to my dear friend, thank you. I laugh and take them by the hand, guiding them over to a table where I spot Piper sitting surrounded by tankards of ale. Winning? She raises one of the tankards at August and I as we take a seat, gulping the frothy beverage eagerly. Hey, nice! Pirate Piper! Too bloody right I am. Beat Wolfman five times in a row. Now he owes me drinks for the rest of the night. She slams her elbow down onto the table and wiggles her fingers, eyes narrowing at August. Come on, August, for old time's sake. August crosses their arms over their chest and smiles menacingly. Not in a million years, Merriman. Piper sighs and grabs another tankard. Always worth a shot. What are you two lovebirds still doing here anyway? I know for a fact that August is squirming in their lovely boots over spending the night among all the creepy creatures. 
I take a look around the tavern and survey the crowds. It's definitely not unusual for the likes of Finn, Alcar, and Omen to show their faces here, but I can definitely sense that there are certainly more than three not-so-human auras in here this evening. Halloween must be the perfect night for them to slip in unnoticed, and with the comfort of knowing that we won't do anything about it if they behave. You know I like to keep a close eye on things. I have a responsibility to the town. Piper rolls her eyes and prods a finger in their direction. Please. They're just as afraid of me as they are of you. Stop putting yourself through the trauma and take your hunter home, August. You need a night off once in a while. They do. They really do. August purses their lips and contemplates it, and I squeeze their thigh under the table in the hope that it might convince them. They glance at me and sigh heavily, a smile hooking the corner of their mouth. Fine, but I expect you to call on me if anything happens, understand? Piper salutes them with a fist pressed against her chest and a wicked smile. Yes, Lieutenant. Now go on, fuck off home. August stands and I follow them, quickly turning to mouth the silent thank you to Piper before we make our way through the crowd. August sits at the end of the bed, looking up at me expectantly as I leaf through the latest instalment of the wizard staff. Oh, Lord. We're really going to do this, aren't we? We're going to act out smutty literature. Okay. Uh, Camille, you, you don't have to do this. I'm per... Uh-uh. I promised, didn't I? They huff dramatically and lay back on the bed, staring at the ceiling. How did my life become this? And this voice acting, oh no. Stick with the book, improvise. I'm drawn to improvise. I'm drawn to this. I don't think Camille is a particularly good actor. Oh, but we... oh no. This was the one I was drawn to. I laugh and kick at their boot, finally finding the chapter I was looking for. I frown down at the page, but I frown down at the page and groan before tossing it aside. They swiftly sit up. What do you do? And then I pounce. <laughs> August falls back in a fit of giggles, their long, loose hair fanning in a halo around them as I descend. Not into roleplay, Hunter. I'm far too impatient. They laugh against the press of my mouth as I kiss them deeply and press them against the mattress. I can feel their heart beating against my chest. It quickens as my fingertips trace their ribs over the silken fabric of their shirt, and August draws their thighs up around my waist in response. I smile against their lips. The night has only just begun. Hey! <laughs> nice! <laughs> that was cool. And there we go. That is it. That is everything for when the night comes. And that was, that was such a sweet end. That was such a sweet end to this. I don't, I will admit, I don't think Halloween was as good as Till Death, but I did really enjoy that. I really enjoyed that mini story. Oh, I'm, I'm so glad I decided to play another visual novel. I've really enjoyed my time with When the Night Comes and when Call Me Under, which is uh, Lunaris Games next visual novel comes out, I will absolutely be bringing that to the channel. Uh, but what are we playing next? Well, tomorrow I will be returning to the genre of FMVs and we will be playing Contradiction, Spot the Liar. But until then, please remember to like if you enjoyed, leave a comment below, 
And if you wanted to subscribe, it would be very much appreciated. I've been Callista. Thanks for watching and see you in the next episode.